What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're in Orlando, Florida, we're in front of our store. Good things are happening. We're gonna be working on my tank today. An episode about a month and a half ago, I upgraded my lights to the Hydros 32s. I need bigger and better. I want my tank to look just like Josh, the highlight look. So who better than to, to talk to, to Josh, all about lighting today. We're gonna be upgrading the lights to uh, Gen 6 Radium for us. So he's gonna be helping me switch them and I'm gonna give you a bunch of eye candy, all the stuff that has been going on with my tank. So let's go inside and check it out, come on. A little late, but I want to give a shout out to uh, Frank and Chili right here from BRS. This was from Thin uh, Exotic Coils right here. I don't. Damn, little, little Street Fighter can, little dog. He wants me to put it in the lagoon. Let's see. Ready? It's not floating. It's fake news. This is the last update for this year. It's been uh, about 14 months since I set it up. I had some issues recently. I'm not too proud of it. I was very confident with the amount of food that I was feeding. I was doing all the reef nutrition. I was doing phytoplankton. I was doing amino acids from Brightwell. I was doing a little bit of everything. I was doing iodine multiple times a week and I had a cyanobacteria outbreak and I had a hairy algae outbreak. It was pretty bad. I came back. I took care of it about a week ago. I cranked the skimmer full time. So everything is back to normal. I had a couple calls that bleach since the last time that I put new lights. However, I keep going to see Josh's tank over there and he's got these two radiant lights and he's got this beautiful look to it. And I say, dude, last time we upgraded the lights and they weren't big enough. I got the uh, Hydra 32s, I got two of them and it wasn't, the spread wasn't enough for the whole tank. So I went ahead and got two new radiant lights, the Radeon 6, and we're putting them on right now. I'm gonna still keep the two blades. Josh, as you guys know, he's gonna be programming them exactly how he's programming the ones on his tank. On the meantime, you guys see Josh right here putting these lights. Uh, you know what kind of blades are these, Josh, or no? These are the, the Blade Grow. And what's the difference from a Glow? The other one's a blue, if I'm correct? So the Glow, the Glow has more UV, so it's got more of a purpley pink look to it. These are just blue and white, pretty much. Do you see use for UV in the aquarium so far? Yeah, I mean, so there's a whole bunch of different spectrums of UV. I feel like for us, the only time that we use the UV is when it's in tandem with the blue. So it kind of disguises that pink purple a little bit, but I'm sure it's useful. I mean, I'm not a spectral analysis guy, but I definitely think that it holds it holds a lot of merit. You know, gotcha. I, feel, I feel like if we didn't have it, we would be missing it. So I keep telling you, I do want the look in your tank, but I still love my blue. Mm -hmm. And you suggested that I try the Gen 6 Blues mm -hmm. versus the, you got the Gen 6 Y, so we can play with both back and forth to do comparison. Can you tell the audience what's the main difference between the Gen 6 Blues versus the regular Gen 6? Sure. I don't remember exactly which diodes are different between the two, but I know that there's significantly more blue diodes in the, the Gen 6 Blue than there is in the Pro. Um, we found that the Pro puts out a little bit more par because it does have that additional white. Um, but in this case, I think, I think it's gonna be a really good fit because remember what we were just talking about with the blade, it's only blue and white. And then the Radeon has that full capability also. So we'll be able to balance it out. And I think you might actually get a better crisp white and a better crisp blue. Than better I blanket have. too? You think we'll get a better blanket because of oh, the- Oh, by uh... far. Look, I mean, this the way that these lights are built is more like a panel. And you know, e Ecotech still stands behind it and says it's the best light that they've ever produced. Does it remind you almost like, a, like the old T5 blanket that it used to do on the tanks? It, a little bit? It does have less of that shimmer and less of that spotlight look. And I feel like I can look at the tank and see right now that there's a lot less shadowing than there is on my Gen 4s. It'd be nice to see with the blades how they do on your tank because I think this is gonna be a really, really good combo. At first, if you guys remember, if you go back into the videos of this tank, we had three blades. Then we went to two blades and the two Hydras 32s. Mm -hmm. And now we're switching the Hydras 32 for two Radians, the, the blues. And again, we're just, I, I keep striving to get the tank looking better and better. Uh, again, I, like I mentioned earlier, this tank's been running for a year and two months, and it's finally reaching a peak. I believe that by the time Reef Palooza come here, it's gonna be looking all that. It still needs another three to five months where the tank is start turning into mini colonies, but I'm seeing a lot of growth now, and hopefully Josh is gonna be adjusting the lights and we get more growth. And uh, Josh, when you, when you adjust these lights, what is the main thing that you look to do? What do you go by? Because I'm not afraid to say, guys, I'm horrible with technology. I'm horrible with the, anything that I have to do electronics. So I don't adjust my lights. That's one thing I don't do. Josh is the in-house expert for lights. So 
It's a good question for you. So what, do you, what is the first thing you do? For, for here at Worldwide Corals, we like to try to apply uh, idea of subtle blue for the better part of the day, and then a shorter window of really high par or significantly higher par. I personally, I think about this, the situation that we're trying to, to fix. Right, so it's a solution to me. It's like, here's the problem, here's the solution. The problem is with your old lights, they were this big, right? Now you've got double the light. So now we've got not only double the power, but we've got also double the width, right? So that's the solution. We've got a bigger fixture. Okay. If you if you look at these, these, these optics give you a very focal source and it spreads it out in a cone. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's a 120 degree angle or whatnot, but they do the same thing here with these lenses, except for all of them are spaced out further. So now you've got a broader range of light. It's not such a, such a spotlight and we definitely got good light right here in the middle, which is where you were lacking before. Gotcha. So again, going back to the question that you asked me, what am, I, what am I thinking about? Well, you've got chalices, you've got Samacora of mushrooms, Ghanis, Acros, Akins. Euphilia, Blasters, Akins. Yeah, like literally everything that we keep here. So we have to be mindful that we're trying to get the best color and growth out of your acros, which means a good amount of light, but then we're also trying to cater a little bit. Which is tough, it's a to, reef. Yeah, to those corals that don't like that light. So I think what we're gonna do is the best, this is the best case scenario, more devices, less power. So we're gonna turn them way down. Okay. And we're gonna blanket the tank with as even light as we can because there's more devices. And we're gonna have that really super strong, strong, strong blue that you want. Okay. But we're gonna try to get the color of the white that I, I use. So I think my, my graph is gonna look different. It's gonna be lower on the beginning part where it's white, and then it's gonna go higher to where the blue is. So okay. we get that punch. So my other question, Josh, you're you're so good, obviously, we've been doing course for a very long time. This is what we do in our sleep. Mm. You know how to adjust these lights. What do you suggest for someone at home adjusting the lights if they don't have a part meter? What would they do? So that's a really good question because a lot of people don't have access to a part meter. We have to think very hard about the corals that you know are gonna tell you something. Okay. Okay, so if I'm gonna go off of your tank right now, I keep looking at those pink diamonds in the middle going, man, I think that they're getting a little bit too much light. Yeah. Right? They're kind of open. They're not all the way colorful. The last couple of weeks I've come in here, I look at them and I think to myself, they're a little bit on the light side. They're a little bit, I call it squinchy, Shrunken, which yeah. is stupid. Uh, they're kind of squinchy. They don't really open up all the way. I think that they're getting too much light down there. So. If I'm gonna go and try to compare this light with a program to your old light, I'm gonna make sure that those stay open. Gotcha. Because if, if they don't, I'm gonna assume that there's probably more light than what I had on so there when I took the So you use it as an indicator. Them. Yeah. So basically, if you're putting new lights at home, you're saying, keep an eye on your corals and figure out which one is the first one to bleach and use it as an indicator. Mm -hmm. you, you almost have to make a mistake in the past. Right? So you know when you make a mistake, too much light, there's one or two corals that always tell you. Yeah, they're the first ones to, to change colors. So, I mean, you don't need a par meter to know that a coral's not happy. You need a par meter to know relative, you know, to one another. The main thing that me personally, since I don't use par meter, I always try to start on the lower side because if you start lower, then the coral will get a little bit brown and will lose a little bit of color. But if you start with too much, then the coral will get bleached. It's always very hard to come back from a bleached coral versus getting a coral that is brown and just giving them some love. The coral within a week will color up. Bleach can take months. Sometimes the coral will die after. Some mm -hmm. corals don't recover from bleach. They just end up dying. They get too weak and they can't they can take the stress. Yeah, this is a really good point for people too. Go for it. Okay, so you, you also asked me when, when I set the lights, what am I looking for if I don't have a par meter? Yes. So this light makes 215 watts at peak performance. Okay. So it used to be 150 crank, back in the day. I know. So again, they're even more powerful. If I crank up all the colors and I turn up the intensity all the way, it's 215 watts. Okay. Your hydras were only 90. Okay. Well, so one of them is more than two of them together. So we have to consider what we have to do is we pretty much have to cut the power by half. Okay. Right? Because 90, Makes 215, sense, yeah. the, the hydro was a little bit less yeah. than half. So that's going to be my starting point is half of what you had. Half of what I had. And then I'm going to keep observating. If I see any changes, I'm going to talk to you and then you're going to come bring them up or bring them down. Yeah, because at the end there, we were we were cranked all the way up. Your hydros had no more. Okay. We could extend we could extend the, the amount of photo period that you had, but we couldn't give it any more power. And this, this is a silly question that I think I know the answer, mm -hmm. but I'm so bad with apps, electronics and all this. Will I control it just like I did my lights with the Moviews, just the little up and down, lights all blue, feed mode, blah, 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 all white? 
Yeah, so so when we when we set your hydros up, we had it set up on Mobius. Okay. So you'll have the live demo, you'll have the ability to to program a feed mode. That's okay. something that I'll do when I set it up. So another question, Josh, do you have any tips for people when they put when they change their lights or when they a lot of people do, they upgrade lights, they get more lights, they, they get the next brand or whatever in the case maybe you have any tips for them? What is the first thing they should do? Yeah, actually I think I think the most important thing is to consider where the coral wants to live. If your coral is a lower light coral, then of course we can't just start at the top of the tank. So my recommendation would be either get yourself a frag rack or you know find a way to mount it so that it's fixed in the bottom of the tank, not just throwing it in the gravel because that's bad for a coral to get settled in, right? Yeah. Um, I would probably, if it was me, I would do a frag rack and I would start it off here to the side, here or here. Where there's less light. There's way less light, and then you you have you've got the ability to move it around until you find a place where it's just like really optimally happy. I think one of the biggest mistakes, turning the lights down. Why? Because now every single one of your corals just lost ground, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they lost, they the lost momentum. exactly momentum. That's stability. Cause once for. the corals reach stability for a while, they need to be stable for a while before they take off. And when you stop that, it's no different when you're running, you're in the moment and you stop, you lost the momentum, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's the same thing here, right? Yeah. And, and two, you're trying to go for optimal color and growth. Yeah. So we, we sacrifice that by changing the tank all together for one coral or two corals or three corals, if that's what you do. We do. Very funny you say that because I keep telling Josh, I want more growth. He's telling me, hey, you're going to sacrifice some of your colors. I'm like, no, no. And you do, guys. It's like if you want better colors, sometimes it takes, well, not with every coral. Let me just rephrase that. But for the most part, when you put more light, a lot of the corals get lighter. So sometimes you have to find that the balance between nutrients and light and play with those two. I can go to Josh's tank and be like, what's your part? He can tell me my part's 400. Oh, let's put 400 on my part. No, no two tanks are alike. Uh, he's got more fish. Maybe I got more fish. Maybe I don't do so many water changes. Maybe he's got filter socks and I don't. Maybe he doesn't run a protein skimmer and I do. So there's so many variables that you don't get to see. Our naked eye don't get to see how the light penetrates. For sure. Right? So there's, there's, there's always like different scenarios. I think you hit the nail on the head there. You can't just, you can't duplicate ever one scenario to the next. No. So yeah, I mean, you're definitely gonna sacrifice color for growth, but you can dial that color back in based on the amount of food you put in. Yes. Tank. This is not something that happens overnight. If you get up to then, you try to run a marathon, you're gonna mess up your knees, your toes, you're gonna have blisters everywhere. But guess what? People that run every day, you ask them to go run a marathon right now, it's not gonna be an issue for it. You've gotta build yourself to it. And I think it's the same thing with corals. A lot of people wanna give them more light, but you have to let the corals tell you a story back. They're gonna tell you, look, I don't look happy. I'm shrinking, like you were saying mm -hmm. with the Zoantes. I'm bleaching, I'm receding. So you gotta be able to to read your corals, is you have to be able to understand your reef tank. You cannot grab an acupura from here and take it back into the ocean immediately. Mm. That coral is gonna bleach. Yep. It, you gotta get it used to. You can put it to the ocean, but not at the very top where all the other acroporas are. That's kind of the methodology that we use here. If it's if it's an acropora tank and it's really high energy, we have to make sure that the corals are getting the food. If it's a low energy tank like mushrooms, you can't feed it over the top because your filtration's not doing its job. It's gonna grow algae all over the place and you're not giving it a lot of light. So why is it necessary? Yep. Right? We gotta, what we're trying to explain here to the people at home is nutrient versus light. And there's a very close correlation. If you want more light, you have to figure a way to feed more basically, and you gotta make sure that the corals are taking in that food and the corals are healthy. I have a little bit of a challenge. Vic is asking for the same color that I have on my tank, which it's it's gonna be a little bit different because of the fact that these are blues and mine are pros. Also, he has blades and I don't. So I think what I'm gonna do, the most practical approach is just leave the blades the, the way that they are. And I think that this color that you see on the aquarium right now, that's all he's gonna get when it comes to white light. So because of the fact that the blues are primarily blue and not so much white, the full spectrum is still a little bit more on the blue side. He's looking for performance, he's gonna get that no matter what because there's more power. But ultimately, I'm going for a look. That's the end of the day what we're shooting for. So when we changed these lights last time, our objective was to keep it about the same, just like we're doing now, so that the corals don't get shocked. You know, we were just curious talking about it, what the difference is between 100% everything. So these blades are turned up all the way, and then these radions are out of the box, cranked all the way up. Where we had left it last time, we said we were gonna keep 
right around 250. I think I think the highest point was 280 right here where this uh, splice is. That's 500 and let's take the average, 570, 560. There you go, proof's in the pudding. So we're gonna stick with the plan. We'll probably go down 50% on the schedule because his hydros were set at 80% across the board on the full spectrum. And then when it went to blue, the, all the whites go off, the red, the green, all those colors. And then the blues go just above 100. So this is actually something really cool to talk about too. The, the idea behind this panel lighting is that we get the most even spread of light just to go and, and give you know Ecotech a pat on the back for this product. Look at this, even in the very corner, at the same height that we just measured in the very center of the tank, this is 300 par. This is the most indirect spot in the entire tank and it's over 300 par. That's awesome. As I move around, I'm still over 500. Kudos to these guys, very well covered blanket lighting. We're cheating with the blade, but still, even then, it's, it's very well done. All right, guys, we're done for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, it's a wrap pun intended rap is coming soon anyways anyhow we noticed that you guys enjoyed the video for the flow so now we did this lighting video there was a lot of things that i didn't know that i learned today with josh hopefully you guys learned something new you guys get to see my tank i'm gonna give you guys an update in two months again i'm gonna keep going with this tank guys it's looking phenomenal i hope you guys like it don't forget to subscribe to our channel give us a like post some comments below we'll see you guys soon